Good morning. We've got, I don't know if you can see that, blue skies today, which, I mean, this time of year, it, it feels like we haven't had blue skies for a very long time, so it just feels good. Now, I found this corner back in the barnyard here because I did want to get out of the wind. The wind is a bit brisk today. Uh, I, won't, I won't tell the temperature because probably my Western Canadian and American Plains friends will laugh at the fact it's not that cold, but it feels cold to me. Damp cold, of course. So, uh, but the sun is out, so feeling pretty good. Uh, today, we've got a bunch of random jobs to do today. Thought you could follow along. Uh, first job we got to do is go picture some calves. Oh, actually, no. Dad's going to be here shortly. We have to load a cow for him uh, to send to the stockyard. So that'll be job number one. After we do that, then we're going to take some pictures of some calves. I'll show you why. We got an update on where we are at with the barn, although it's not all that thrilling given we're kind of in a lockdown, stay-at-home order, state of emergency here in Ontario. But we'll still give that update and we'll see what else we can get into today. Okay, so I found my way into the milk house for a minute. Dad said he's on his way, so I'm just kind of keeping an eye out for him coming down the road with the trailer. First job, as I mentioned, was actually to load up Casey the cow. She is heading off to the sales barn, unfortunately for her. Uh, basically, she's a jersey that we have bred. Vet comes, does an ultrasound, says she's in calf. And then a month later, she's not in calf anymore. Breed her again. Get her a calf, do the ultrasound, say she's in calf. A month later, she's not a calf anymore. And that's not really a good sign. So uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to send her to the sales barn today. That'll load her up and drop her off there. Somebody else will buy her uh, later on today. And basically, after that, she becomes a beef animal. Well, Casey did not have the right uh, ear tag in her. They need that, they need a radio frequency tag that basically what it will do is when she walks through particular parts of the sales barn, a uh, radio ID, really, right now? Um, a radio scanner uh, is going to scan that tag as she kind of walks through to identify her place where it's coming from our farm and then track where she goes and that's all part of kind of the national standard the national system to track every animal movement the problem is the radio tag that we gave her originally fell out at some point the tags are actually horrific sometimes for falling out we replace tags all the time uh this clearly fell out sometime recently so what i gotta do is we put a substitution tag in that we have and it's got a number and she has a number on her paper so what i've got to do before dad gets to the sales barn is enter into the reporting system that this tag now belongs to this animal and then it'll keep track so and we're going to do it by the window because the internet is much better here than it is um in the office it's actually really bad in the office and there's another thing i can't wait to have in the barn is actual internet in the office. Well, that was a pretty easy job getting her loaded up, uh, getting the tag put together. Now we're gonna go to picture cast. So what we've got is we've got on this board, 
is all the calves that are outside. So there's there's Eminem, there's Mittens, there's Neon, there's Nancy, a whole bunch of calves out there. What we have to do here is we have to take a picture of all of the Holstein calves. We don't have to do it with a Jersey calf because they all come out brown. They all look they all look the same. But with a Holstein and with them being registered Holstein, it's kind of like you'd register and get paperwork for a purebred poodle or a purebred lab or whatever. You can do the same thing with cows and we do the same thing with cows. <laughs> One time as a kid, I remember what you had to do to identify a Holstein. You actually had to draw her. So you got this like piece of paper that you that had the outline of an animal and then you drew all her spots because the Holstein, all their spots are different. So that was kind of the way to identify them is that, oh, this one has a spot up on the top left-hand hip of her or whatever. Basically, fortunately now at least, we, we don't have to draw and trace because if you try to draw and trace all the spots on a hyper two-week-old calf, it, it, it's painful and it was painful when we did it. Now, all we have to do is uh, take their coat off, snap a picture, put their coat back on, and then we send that in with the paper. And we know that, for instance, mittens, the spots on her match mittens, and it's just a way to identify. So, back out into the sunshine and we get that done. Okay, calf number one is mittens. Oh, she's already getting up for us. I don't know if you remember from one of the earlier videos. I can't remember which episode. Anyway, we moved mittens to the hut. She's obviously growing quite well. Uh, let's see if we can take a picture. Basically when I do this, my camera roll is just picture after picture of trying to get a calf to stand still. thing we got to do in here is we've got to check for extra teeth. Basically find out if she has a fifth nipple. Which doesn't happen very often but unfortunately happens somewhat rarely that we do have to check to make sure because when she grows up to a cow she's only going to have four quarters to her udder. So if she has a fifth nipple so to speak or a fifth teat that's going to be attached to one of those quarters and we're not going to be able to milk her properly. Um, we're not going to be able to do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick check of that. Um, if she has it, then we'll just um, nip it off, spray it with a disinfectant, but hopefully she doesn't. So we got to get her on her side. She has one, we gotta deal with that. <laughs> I said rarely, what's the chance the first calf I ever show you doing that to has one? We'll have to get that dealt with. Okay. 
We need sharp scissors and we need an antiseptic spray just that we'll spray on. It's not gonna do much here, but just enough. So, step one, we gotta put her on her side again. Good. Easy, easy, easy. I know. Okay, I'll snap a photo of what it looks like on this phone. And that way you can see what I'm looking at here. So, as you can see, ooh, this is gonna go bad. Is right there. See how there is just that little nub right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. That's basically an extra teat attached to that quarter. All we gotta do is snip it off. Won't be much. You just kind of got to do it quick and then Good. nothing to her. Yep. And then we just spray that on. Of course, the stuff is red as red, so it looks awful when you spray it, but it itself will be fine. Okay. Nothing to it. Okay, come on. I don't know. Oh, flip over. Calf tipping, I guess. Here we go. Nothing to her. On to the next one. Side. Nope, still wrong side. Look at me, stand still. I hope I got a good one in there. <laughs> it's definitely not perfect, but it'll do. Okay. Come on. Back here by the window where I have good internet. Email those pictures to mom, then she does up the paperwork and gets them uh, registered with Holstein Canada. And then yeah, I'll do a quick sweep up and scrape up around the barn quickly. And then, as thrilling as I'm sure it would be for you, but I've got a few conference calls, Zoom meetings, team meetings, I don't know. A bunch of them for the next two or three hours kind of fitting with our communications and marketing company side I will bore I will save you from the boredom of another zoom call I'll do those and then we'll be back out in the barn in a little while uh, maybe that's a good time to give you an update on where the barns at
Okay, let's do this quick. The kids are at recess in their virtual school, which, to be honest, is, go is going okay. Bella shares the office with me, Cash is in the other room, so it's, it's going fine, but they are in recess, so things are at least a little quieter around here. Um, I'm, and plus, I'm in the middle of conference calls now, so I thought maybe the best thing to do would be to actually bring you up to speed on the barn situation quickly. One of the... One of the challenges, as I mentioned before, is the fact that because everything is shut down, um, you know, there's a stay at home, a stay at home order, state of emergency in the province. Uh, only essential work is really what is allowed. Now, as dairy farmers, we are obviously count as essential and keep going. And all of the people that are supporting us, whether it be truck drivers and engineers and tech support and mechanics and accountants and all of that kind of stuff. They're all working too. The challenge is kind of that middle ground in terms of if we were building, it would still be going on. But because we're not building and not building immediately, do we count as completely essential? So basically what we've decided to do is, okay, let's worry about some of the other work we can do in the short term in the next few weeks rather than worry about going out and visiting other barns and visiting other people. So great news is we have come up with an engineer. Nick Heemstra uh, is with uh, Design Logics Engineering, I think is his company. Uh, young guy has been doing more and more dairy barns and came actually recommended from quite a few people. So he, we talked to him yesterday and confirmed that he would be the engineer. Which means that the drawing that I showed you last week, actually I'll show it again here right now, uh, that drawing is what we're going to send to him uh, with a couple of minor edits and then he's just going to put a very basic drawing together that basically is showing where posts are going to be in supports and things like that, that then can go back to all of those companies that are that would help that we would buy things from and would help build it, contractors, things like that, and we can get some pricing. It won't be by any means a final drawing that says this is what we're going to build, but at least we can kind of work on a lot of the back end here in the office to get that pricing, get the financing, get all that kind of stuff. So that is uh, what we're going to do, at least in the short term for the next few weeks. And then depending on where all of this lockdown stuff goes, we'll kind of decide from there how we proceed in the next few weeks. Uh, but... Anyway, it's almost time for my next call, so I will go do that, and as soon as I'm finally done here in the next half hour or hour or so, uh, we'll head back to the barn and we'll get back to work. We are now moving the cows.
Okay, right, last job. At least before a beer break and then we start chores. Is these heifers need some hay. We got a bale here. We can roll it out. Let's set you here. Well, we made it to the barn office. We're gonna sit for a few minutes. I don't know where the kids went. I should go find them actually. Yeah, I'll go find them. But it is, what, 4.30? Got 15, 20 minutes before we gotta start milking for the night, get the calves fed, but that's basically the day around here. So hope the tour was all right today. We will see you next week. Have a good week in the meantime. <laughs>